Having now done RET on the right eye and refined the best vision sphere, we will now assess the uh, cylindrical component of the right eye using the Fan and Block technique. This is a relatively simple technique and is a useful technique to be familiar with when Jackson cross sill doesn't always work in practice. Um, and it's particularly useful for when uh, assessing large cylindrical powers or refractive error where you've got a high, high level of astigmatism. So the technique involves, first of all, getting the patient to look at the fan chart. This is the refractive error, having done the best vision sphere and the RET. The first thing to do is to take out the sill. We'll be adding a plus 050 to bring the back focal line closest to the retina. Bringing the back focal line onto the retina will help us determine the principal meridians of the astigmatism. We're going to ask the patient to look at this fan chart and to tell us where the lines appear sharpest. So looking at the chart, look thinking of it as a clock face, where do the lines look sharpest for you? Um, between one and two o'clock. Okay, so looking at the chart, we're going to just move this. So I'm moving my arrow towards the direction of one and two o'clock. Um, so am I pointing? So at yep. the clearest line? Yep. Okay, so now if you look at the arrow that I'm using to point at that line, do both limbs of the arrow look equally clear or does one side look sharper than the other side? They look equally clear. Okay, that's great, so they look equally clear. Although the axis shown here in real terms is 110, you'll see that the fan actually shows that as 20 degrees. And that 20 degrees is where the trial sill lens needs to be placed in the trial frame. And that's because the anterior focal line is perpendicular to the posterior focal line and the fan is correcting for this change in orientation. The reason the current line looks sharpest is because that's showing the posterior focal line but actually the anterior focal line is 90 degrees to it so that's why we need to put the sill in at 90 degrees to that. So that means that the axis here is 20 degrees okay so we now know where the axis is now we need to find the power we're going to put in the sill that we found on ret at 20 degrees we need to now refine the power of this sill to do that we'll be using these blocks one set of blocks are parallel to the arrow and the second set is perpendicular the aim is to get both blocks equally clear. We'll ask the patient which blocks look clearer to you at the moment. The ones to the right or to the left? To the right. To the right, okay. So that suggests that the patient requires a stronger cylindrical power. So we're going to go from one diopter to 1.25 and we'll keep this at the same axis as before which is 20 degrees. So now looking at the blocks, do they look equally clear? Equally clear. Okay, so this suggests now that the cylindrical power has been found if the patient had said that the left hand blocks were clearer, that would suggest that the sill power was too strong and we would have to come down in, in, in the power to, to make it more positive. Okay. So now we will do a check test to ensure that this, this is the right power. And the check test is essentially putting a minus 025 sill on top of this prescription and asking the patient how the clarity of the blocks appear. So do the blocks still look equally clear or is one clearer than the other? The ones on the left look clearer. Okay, so that's the correct answer. That suggests that we've over minus the patient on the sill there. So uh, this is the correct prescription that we've found. Okay, another check test is putting a plus 050 and asking the patient how the clarity of the blocks look. Do they look equally blurred or does one set of blocks look sharper than the other? They look both the same. Okay, so if one looks sharper than the other, then that would should suggest that the two focal lines are still separated and the correct cylindrical power has not been found. The fact that the patient is saying that both blocks look equally blurred suggests that we have found the correct sill here. Next, we would go back to our duochrome and check the best vision sphere again. We're looking at the circles on the red and the green, do the circles appear sharper on the red or the green? On the red. On the red, lovely. And if I hold this lens up, they look sharp on the red or the green? Still on the red. Still on the red, lovely, okay. And again, looking at the circles on the red and green, sharp on the red or the green? On the red. On the red, and how about now, sharp on the red or the green there? Both about the same. Lovely, okay. And having a look at the circles on the red and green, sharper on the red or the green there? Both about the same. So looking at the circles on the red and green, sharper on the red or the green? On the red. On the red, lovely. Okay, so that's confirmed for us that we've found the maximum plus, minimum minus um, for this particular refractive error. 
And then we'll double check on the letter chart. So looking at the chart, what's the smallest sign of letters you can read there for me, please? E, D, V, F, N. Lovely. And looking at the F for me there. OK, so here we're again just double checking that we've given the maximum plus. So looking at that F, is it clearer with or without this lens? Or without. just the same, without. OK, and again, is it clearer with or without, or just smaller and blacker? Just smaller and blacker. Lovely. And that's confirmed for us again that the maximum plus, minimum, minus has been given. And then we'll, again, like the, with the cross seal, we'll do the plus one blur test. We'll put the plus one in there. And looking at the chart, what's the smallest sign of letters you can read there, please? F, H, V, N, H. Lovely. OK, so the patient's blowing down to 612, which shows us again that the patient um, is, hasn't been over minus. Having done RET and then followed that up with the best vision sphere, this is how the focal lines currently look in our patient's eye. So you can see that the anterior focal line and the posterior focal line are relatively close to the retina, and then the circle east confusion in, is in the middle, but there is still that gap between the two focal lines which we need to get rid of. So we need to correct for that gap. So that's what we're going to be doing with the fan and block test. So this is an alternative test to Jackson cross sill. It's another way of determining the astigmatic power of the eye. Having reached this point, we're now going to take out the cylindrical power that we found on RET. So the sill that was found on RET was a one diopter sill. So we're going to take that out. And what that does is it moves the anterior focal line forwards by one diopter, which means that the circle least confusion moves to the front as well by 0.5 diopters. Okay, so everything moves forward in terms of the anterior focal line and the circle east confusion. The posterior focal line remains where it is. What we then do is we then add a plus 050 diopter sphere to bring that back focal line in front of the retina. Okay, and this is really done to ensure that accommodation is being controlled to make sure that the fan and block procedure is conducted in a myopic state. Now, if the sill is particularly incorrect, having done RET, then you may need to add more than plus 050 to bring that back focal line in front of the retina. But in this case, plus 050 is adequate, and we've got the posterior focal line close to the retina. So next, we need to determine the orientation of where this posterior focal line is. So we're going to be using the fan chart to do that. So we then do the procedure. We found that the patient has the best clarity at 20 degrees. So at 20 degrees, we then add our sill power that we found on RET at 20 degrees. But that's still an estimate, so we refine that using the blocks. So using the blocks, we've asked the patient the question, which blocks look the clearest? The patient found that the ones parallel to the arrow were the sharpest, so we increased the cylindrical power until we got to the point where both blocks look equally clear. If in the case that the patient had said that the perpendicular blocks look clearest, we would have had to reduce the cylindrical power. Unlike Jackson cross sill, we don't need to manipulate the spherical power here when we change the sill because we're not interested in maintaining that circle least confusion on the retina as we did in JCC. Once the correct cylindrical power has been found, the two focal lines are on top of each other, hence you've corrected the distance between the two focal lines, and you've corrected the astigmatism, and then the next step is to just refine the sphere using the duochrome and the letter chart.